stroke is a catastrophic disease. It may result in severe disability. Sometimes it may result in death. The common symptoms of stroke include weakness of one side of limbs, sudden slurring of speech, sudden unsteadiness, sudden imbalance while walking, sudden visual disturbance, sudden confused speech. So all these are common important, important symptoms of stroke. Once the patient enters into the stroke ready hospital, the emergency doctor will examine the patient. Within a few seconds, he will conclude the patient has stroke. So once the stroke is diagnosed, the emergency doctor will activate code brain. Once the code is activated, concerned specialist, neurologist, scan doctor, anesthesiologist and interventional radiologist, all those specialists will be informed, the patient will be taken to the scan room as immediately as possible, at least within 20 minutes of reaching the hospital. The neurologist and the radiologist will be seeing the images and deciding upon what uh, to be done to the patient. If the patient has an ischemic stroke, that is uh, because of uh, clot, if the patient develops a stroke secondary to a clot, that is called ischemic stroke. The other stroke is a hemorrhagic stroke, which uh, occurs because of bursting of the clot uh, secondary to hypertension. So we will be able to differentiate between the ischemic stroke and the hemorrhagic stroke depending upon the uh, CT report. Once we have diagnosed uh, whether the patient is uh, having an ischemic stroke or a hemorrhagic stroke, then we decide what to do. If the patient has an ischemic stroke, then we do a thrombolysis, if needed a thrombectomy. If we find that the patient has only hemorrhagic stroke, then patient uh, proceeds to have a surgery if needed. In case of a small thrombus, like if patient has come with a small stroke or if the patient has come within 4.5 hours, we will proceed with thrombolysis. We will give the patient an injection called RTPA, which is a clot burster. And once, we, once the injection is given, the injection will burst the clot and lyse the clot and the stroke will be better. When the patient comes a bit delayed or when the patient's coagulation profile is a bit altered, we will directly go for thrombectomy. So thro a patient who are planned for thrombectomy uh, will go directly from the CT scan room to the intervention radiology suite. So in our hospital we have got a very advanced biplane cath lab machine that is state of art, one of its kind in India. Actually we are the first one to install that machine and it has got very high end features, very sophisticated machine where we can do a CT scan inside the cath lab and the image quality is far far better than the routine cath lab machines and uh, the radiation and dose everything to the patient and operator is very low compared to other machines. Time taken for the procedure also quite low because of this all the advanced features. Uh, once patient comes to our cath lab, so we do the procedure either under local anesthesia or under general anesthesia depending on the severity of the stroke. If the patient is uh, cooperative, we don't go for general anesthesia, we do it under local anesthesia by giving a small uh, local anesthetic agent in the thigh area or in the wrist area. Then what we do, we put a small uh, catheter that is a plastic tube and through that tube we go inside the brain and in the brain again we take an angiogram to confirm where is the clot. Once we find out the clot, we use small wire that is very thin wire uh, inside the brain. We go and we uh, reach up, the, the, up to the clot. Sometimes we cross the clot, then we take our uh, aspiration catheter that is uh, plastic tubes up to the clot, then we uh, do suction or aspiration to remove the clot. Sometimes with aspiration, the clot may not come out. So what we do, we deploy a stent retriever and we retrieve the clot. So even uh, with stent retriever, sometimes we may not able to retrieve, then we use the combined technique that is uh, both aspiration system as well as stent retriever to retrieve the clot from the brain. So this is about ischemic stroke. And in hemorrhagic stroke, uh, what we offer for subarachnoid hemorrhage, that the patient comes with severe headache, sometimes they'll, they'll lose consciousness, sometimes they co come with comatose condition. So in that condition, what we do, we find out the cause of the bleed, uh, that is mostly uh, there is an aneurysm. If there is an aneurysm, then we offer treatment, minimal invasive treatment. Like we go inside the brain, we reach up to the aneurysm, and sometimes we do coiling. That is uh, putting small metallic uh, uh, coils inside the aneurysm to occlude it. Sometimes we use stents. Sometimes we use flow diverters, or sometimes we use balloon-assisted coiling for treatment of this type of aneurysms, depending on the uh, aneurysm's morphology. Surgery for stroke is limited to hemorrhagic strokes as the primary surgery. When there is a large hematoma which is causing pressure on the brain and the brain stem with midline shift, then we operate these patients. 
the primary aim is to clear the clot in the brain and then reduce the swelling we use a microscope and we use a minimally invasive approach by making a small incision we remove the clot once the clot is evacuated the brain swelling starts reducing it takes several months for them to recover completely and during this period physiotherapy and rehabilitation plays a major role and it is the advances in the field of physiotherapy and rehabilitation that has made the outcome much better the primary aim is to see to that they have a reasonable quality of life in large ischemic strokes where the stroke involves more than 2/3 of the brain with large intracranial pressure we do remove a large portion of the bone what we call decompression craniotomy this also improves the patient to improve the neurological outcome again in hemorrhagic strokes which is caused due to rupture of an aneurysm what we call aneurysmal rupture and when the patient is in a good grade especially when they are in a younger age with no other comorbid conditions like hypertension diabetes heart disease kidney disease then we can operate by using microsurgical techniques we clip the aneurysm and then they do recover the other area is av malformation where there is an abnormal connection between the artery and the vein inside the brain they also benefit from surgery now in chronic phase that is in the late phase after the rehabilitation whenever we remove the bone we have to put back the bone so that they don't develop late complications due to removal of the bone like hemiper worsening of weakness hemiparesis worsening this is called cranioplasty then when they have significant occlusion in the neck vessels carotid occlusion by atheromatous plaque we do operate what is called as carotid endarterectomy where we remove the plaque the whole idea is to improve the quality of life and then they have a reasonably good life later with rehabilitation and physio uh, we have a state of art uh, neurophysiotherapy unit in which we have all the latest equipments to train the individual we are an integral part of the comprehensive stroke care team so basically stroke is a condition where the tone is lost the motor ability to learn is lost so we help them to learn the motor program uh, the learning activities are made easier to the patient we as a team of physiotherapists provide efficient stroke care so that the patient gets back from his bed and starts walking in the icu setup we aim at preventing the bedrus complications later on once they are shifted out of icu we train them with the help of a tilting table a bobat table and latest neuro development techniques at our department so we see to that the bedridden patient is back on his feet and he is functionally independent and he leads a independent life in the society G Kupuswami Naidu Memorial Hospital we care and it shows